Hello everyone. Miss Carol here again. Hope everybody's doing well. I'm glad you joined us. I'm anxious to get started again. Be remember when we left the Israelites last week, we found out that they were saying, we don't want you as a judge anymore, Samuel, and we don't want your sons who are wicked to be our judge. We want a king. In fact, let's just read exactly what they said. Give us a king to lead us. And we want to be like all the other nations. You know, that's when we get into problems, isn't it? Because they already had a king. They had the king of kings and the lord of lords over them. How could they want anything more? But we as humans... We're never satisfied, you know? We always want something more, something bigger. We always want what someone else has, don't we? And we use the excuse of, well, everybody has it. Well, everybody does it. And that's not how God wants us to be, is it? He wants us to follow him, and he wants us to be that person that is different, that person that follows him and says no to the things that everybody else is doing, but says yes to what Christ wants us to do. And we want to be his followers, don't we? And every time they want to be like the other nations <clears throat> and worship idols and have a king, it always gets them into trouble. But God loves them, doesn't he? <clears throat> and so God says, all right, Samuel, give them what they want, but be sure and tell them what that king's going to do. And if you remember, he said, let's just reread a little bit of that. He said, he's going to take your sons and he's going to make them serve in his armies. <clears throat> he's going to have them build him weapons of war and he's going to have them build his chariots, going to make them commanders in his army. He's going to make them go and plant and plow his own fields. He's going to take your daughters to the palace and have them make perfume and be bakers and cooks and your land, a tenth of it will be taken away from you and everything that you have, a tenth of it will be given to the king. You're, you're going to be like his slaves. And God took you out of Egypt, out of slavery. Is this what you want to do? But they all said, we want a king over us. We want to be like all the other nations with a king to lead us and to go out before us and fight our battles. <clears throat> so here's what happens. We're going to begin reading in 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 1. And the Bible tells us there was a Benjamite, a man from the from the tribe of Benjamin. And he his name was Saul, and he was the son of a man named Kish. He was an impressive young man, without equal among the Israelites. He was a head taller than any of the others. Okay, so he's quite a bit taller than anybody else in Israel. Now the donkeys that belonged to Saul's father, Kish, were lost. And Kish said to his son Saul, Take one of the servants with you and go look for the donkeys. So they headed out to begin their journey to find his father's donkeys. They went from one territory to the other territory, back into the territory of, of Ephraim and into Benjamin, but they looked everywhere. And they had been gone for three days, and still they couldn't find those donkeys. And finally, when they reached the district of Zuf, Saul said to the servant who was with him, Come, Let's go back or my father will stop worrying and thinking about his donkeys and he will start worrying about us. But the servant said, well, look, in this town we're coming up to, there's a man of God there. He's highly respected and everything he says comes true. Let's go there now. Maybe he will tell us which way to take and where those donkeys are. Saul said to his servant, if we go, 
What can we give to the man? We have no gift to take to the man of God. What do we have? And the servant answered him, Look, I have a quarter of a shekel of silver. I will give it to the man of God so that he will tell us what way to take. Good, Saul said to his servant, Well, come, let's go. So they set out for the town where the man of God was. Can you imagine who it is they're going to go talk to? Who would the man of God be? Hmm. And as they were going up the hill to the town, they met some girls coming out to draw water, and they asked them, Is the prophet here? Or the seer? He is, they answered. He's ahead of you. Hurry now. He has just come to our town today, for the people have a sacrifice at the high place. As soon as you enter the town, you will find him before he goes up to the high place to eat. The people will not begin eating until he comes, because he must bless the sacrifice. Afterward, those who were invited will all eat. So go up now. You should find him about this time. And so Saul and his servant went up to the town. And as they were entering it, there was Samuel. Did you guess that that prophet that, that his servant said was going to be Samuel? Well, there was Samuel coming toward them on his way up to the high place. Now, the day before Saul came into town, God had spoken to Samuel and he had told him about this time tomorrow, I will send you a man from the land of Benjamin. Anoint him king over my people Israel. He will deliver my people from the hand of the Philistines. I have looked upon my people and their cry has reached me. And when Samuel caught sight of Saul, the Lord said to him, This is the man I spoke to you about. He will rule over my people. So Saul approached Samuel in the gateway and asked, Would you please tell me where the prophet's house is? And Samuel said, I am the prophet. Go up ahead of me to the high place. For today you are to eat with me, and in the morning I will let you go, and I will tell you all that is in your heart. As for the donkeys you lost three days ago, don't worry about them. They've been found, and you are the desire of all of Israel, and it is you and it is your father's family. And Saul answered, Me? But I am just a Benjamite. I'm from the smallest tribe in all of Israel. And I'm from one of the smallest families in all of Benjamin. Why would you say such a thing to me that all of Israel desires me? And then Samuel brought Saul and his servant into the hall and seated them with those at the head of of the table, there were about 30 men who had been invited. And Saul said to the cook, bring the piece of meat I gave you, the one I told you to set aside. So the cook took up the leg with what was on it and set it in front of Saul. And Samuel said, here is what has been kept for you. Eat, because it was set aside you, for you just for this occasion. From, this, from the time I said I have invited guests, I knew you were coming. And Saul ate with Samuel that day. And after they came down from the high place back to the town, Samuel took Saul and talked with him on the roof of his house. And they rose at daybreak, and Samuel called to Saul on the roof, Get ready, and I will send you on your way. I want to stop here for just a minute. You know, Samuel, God told Samuel, Okay, a man's going to come, and he's a Benjamite. And when he comes to see you, that's going to be the one I want you to anoint as king over Israel. And so Saul, he's... He has no idea what's going on, does he? 
He's just out looking for his father's donkeys. And yet here he finds out that Saul has some, I mean, that Samuel has some very interesting information for him. But you know, I have as many times as I've read through the Bible, I never noticed until I was reading for this lesson that it said that when they finished with that, with that meal, with the feast, that Samuel took Saul on his rooftop and talked to him. You know, it's amazing as many times as I have read through the Bible over and over, over my years, my many years here on earth, there's always something new that I read every time. His words are new every morning for, for sure, his blessings. And he blesses us, and I hope you're, you read God's word every day, because if you don't, how do we know what God wants us to do and how he wants us to be and how he wants us to act? what he wants us to say. Anyway, I just wanted to tell you that. It doesn't ever get boring to read the Bible. There's always something God puts in front of you when you say, whoa, how did I ever miss that? This is one of those moments for me. Anyway, I bet they talked. I was wondering, what were they talking about up there on the rooftop? Well, I have a feeling Samuel was talking to him about being a king and what that was going to be like for him. So he had to have been talking about that. So he says, get ready, and I will send you on your, right, on your way. So when Saul got ready, he and Samuel went outside together. And as they were going down to the edge of the town, Samuel said to talk to Saul, tell your servant to go on ahead of us. I have a message for you. I want you to stay here a while. It's a message from God. And so Saul sent the servant on his way. And then Samuel took a flask of oil and poured it on Saul's head and kissed him and said, Now this is how you anoint, if you remember. This is the way they anointed someone. And this was his way, Samuel's way of saying, Saul, you are now the new king of Israel. And Samuel said to him, has not the Lord anointed you leader over all of his people? So he starts to tell him then to go on his way, but he says to him, there are three signs, three things are going to happen to you today that are going to be very unusual. And when those three things happen, you're going to know that this is really from God, not from me that this is really God's will for you. When these three things come true, you will know this. And so now we're going to start reading. In chapter 10, we're going to start with verse 8. Go down ahead of me to Gilgal. I will surely come down to you to sacrifice burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. But you must wait seven days until I come to you and tell you what you are to do. And as Saul turned to leave Samuel, God changed Saul's heart. And all the signs that Samuel mentioned came to pass that day. So he's saying, just so you know, that I'm telling the truth, and this is God's will. Things are going to happen to you today. Unexpected things. So he and his servant leave. And when they arrive at a place called Gibeah, a procession of prophets came to meet them. And then the Spirit of God came upon Saul, and he began to prophesy and say things that were going to happen in the future that he had never been able to do before. And they saw and they said, What is this, the people said, that's happened to Saul, the son of Kish? Is Saul now a prophet? And a man lived there, said, And who is their father? So it became a saying, Is Saul also? among the prophets. And when they got home, Saul's uncle said to him, Where have you been? Looking for the donkeys, he said. But when we saw they were not to be found, we went to the prophet Samuel. Samuel's uncle said, Well, tell me, what did Samuel say to you? And Saul replied, Well, he assured us that the donkeys had been found. 
but he did not tell his uncle what Samuel had said and that Samuel had anointed him the king of Israel. So Samuel summoned the people of Israel to the Lord at Mizpah and said to them, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I brought you up out of Israel, out of Egypt, and I delivered you from the power of the Egyptians and from all the kingdoms that have tried to hurt you, but you have now rejected me, your God. I had saved you from all the disasters that happened to you, and you have said, No, set a king over us. So now present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes, and I will tell you who I have chosen. So Samuel brought all the twelve tribes of Israel together, and God chose the tribe of Benjamin. So all the Benjamites stepped forward and by families, and the family of Kish stepped forward. And then Saul was chosen. But when everyone looked around for him, they couldn't find him. And so Samuel asked the Lord, Is he even here? Is Saul here today? And the Lord said, Yes, he's here, but he's over there hiding among the baggage. Their new king is hiding. So they ran and they brought him out and he stood among the people and he was a head taller than any of them. And Samuel said to all the people, do you see the man the Lord has chosen? There is no one like him in all of Israel. And the people shouted, long live the king. And Samuel explained to the people again all that was going to go along with having a king. Just, you know, your sons and daughters will have to work for him. All of those things. And he wrote them down on a scroll. And he, he put them before the Lord. So he didn't want those, the people of Israel to forget that he already warned them what would happen if they had a king. And just in case they forgot, it's here on this scroll. You can go back and read it. God already told you what was going to happen. And then Samuel dismissed the people, each to his own home. Saul also went to his home in Gibeah. And many valiant men, whose hearts God had touched, went along with him. So now we find out that Saul is very, he was reluctant, wasn't he? He didn't, it was like he didn't want to be king. He was hiding, wasn't he? Would you want your king to be over there hiding when you're trying to say, yes, he's our king, but he was still not sure. That's what he wanted to do. Now, right off the bat, some men from another town, Jabesh Gilead, sent messengers and said, the Ammonites are trying to attack us. Please come and help us. You're our king. Come and help. And so Saul sent out a message to all of Israel and said, let's all meet together. We have to go rescue our brothers and sisters there in Jabesh Gilead. And 330,000 men from all of the Israelites came and gathered to King Saul ready to fight. And that day, they won the battle against the Ammonites. So let's read uh, 1 Samuel 11, starting in verse 14. Then Samuel said to the people, Come, let us go to Gilgal. And there, once again, crown Saul as our king. And let's all commit to him as being our king. So all the people went to Gilgal and confirmed Saul as the king in front of the presence of the Lord. And there they sacrificed fellowship offerings before the Lord. And all the Israelites held a great celebration. And Saul said to them, to all of Israel, I have listened to everything you've said to me and we have set a king over you. God has set you a king. And so now, remember what's going to happen with him as king. And I've served you up until this time. 
I have served you faithfully. But now I'm going to step down as your judge, and he will step forward for you. But remain faithful always to the Lord. With all your heart, consider the great things he has done for you. But if you and your king decide to do evil, the Lord will no longer be with you. And Saul was 30 years old when he became king, and he reigned over Israel 42 years. All right, so Israel, God gave them what they wanted, and he often lets us have what we want, but sometimes that's not what we should have. That's not what we should have, and he's trying to teach us that sometimes. All right, we have two worksheets we'll be giving out today. There's Samuel and anointing Saul as king, and here's you a word search. All right, love you. Um, be the best that you can be always, and remember, you don't want to follow what's going on in the world we want to follow Christ, don't we? We want to be his followers. All right. I love you and miss you. Bye-bye.